What's going on everybody? Stash Sergeant Michael Leckard here. Today I'm going to walk you through a process on how to create your own workout. Just how to structure something that way you know what you're doing when you're walking to the gym and you can kind of get a good idea of like, okay, I'm doing this today and this is how I'm going to do it. So let's get into it. All right, so today my plan for example is going to be shoulders, right? So I've seen enough YouTube videos to know the bench should look something like this. I should grab a couple of dumbbells and, uh, you know, relatively heavy because I read something about progressive overload. And uh, yeah, so safe way to do. I've seen people on Instagram, they kind of kick them up like this and they push up and they grimace a little bit and then they throw them down. Success, right? That's totally fine if you want to do that. Well, let's let's spice things up a little bit. Let's add a little bit in there. And what I mean by that is let's do those shoulder press, right? Good, good form, good engagement of the deltoid. And let's throw something else in the mix called a superset. And I like to call them dynamic stacking because a superset is a workout that's preceded by another workout that without any rest in between. But what we're doing is we're getting more and more advanced, which is the way I've trained myself for years and how I've trained my clients for years is you're gonna grab onto these weights, right? We're gonna do the traditional workout, which is the shoulder press. And then let's move into pike push-ups, which is not as hard and fatiguing as isolating the deltoids because it's more of activating more of the muscles around our body. A pike push-up is just a push-up on the ground with your, your hips in the air. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. And then we'll stack one more thing on top of that to just squeeze all the juice out of the orange. That way we know what we're doing, right? Or we, we know we're getting something out of it. So I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, and this is just an example. Remember, let's pretend we're doing shoulders today and this is how we're gonna structure uh, circuit one. And we'll do this three times. So grab onto my dumbbells. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna split this down. Yeah, usually you do like eight to 12 reps or whatever the rep scheme is you wanna do. You'll get used to it as time goes on. But we'll push these weights up, 10, 11, 12, looks good, no rest. We're going to go straight to the ground here, hopefully you all can still see me, it looks like you can. And we're going to put our butt in the air and we're going to do some pike push-ups. So head to the ground, oh yeah, not as hard as shoulder press, but still working the same muscles. It's actually working more muscles because we're working on all the stabilizers in between. And now I'm like, dang, my shoulders are on fire. I don't think I could do anything else. Let's add in one more thing. And we'll use knee push-ups because knee push-ups, I feel like anybody can do. And it's a good fatiguer. I mean, you could do regular push-ups, which is what I would recommend. But we're just, for example, we're gonna do knee push-ups. So we're gonna use uh, some of our chest and some of our shoulders and some of our triceps in all three exercises. So again, no rest, even though I've been resting, we're gonna go down, up, down, up. For, we can do 12, we can do whatever the rep scheme is, whatever you feel like. But this last one should be a safe, exhaustive exercise that you can use as a finisher for each circuit, all right? And so now we have three exercises that compound on one another, one to the next to the next. And we're really squeezing all of the potential out of our muscles that we can get. And not just, you know, going to the gym and doing shoulder press or doing bodybuilder exercises. We're really getting some functionality out of it because we're fatiguing the deltoids, we're fatiguing the deltoids and other stabilizers, and then we're getting the rest out of it on that last exercise in succession. So you're really, you're doing all these like little mini challenges or mini circuits to complete. And each rep scheme is gonna be a little challenge that you complete, which makes it a little more entertaining, a little more structured. And it just feels really good when you're done with it because not only did you do the isolating or the isolated exercise, you also did dynamic, dynamic, and got as much out of it as you can. So that's what I would structure one circuit and I'll break down one more circuit for you so you can see how to structure another circuit. But yeah, that's the principle of dynamic stacking. That's the principle of how I would structure workouts for functional fitness and strength training and calorie burn because it's kind of like a HIIT workout, right? You're not totally moving around. I mean, you can stack burpees or something like that in there, but these are more of controlled exercises to squeeze the entire potential out of the muscle. So let's jump into one more example 
and uh, that should be enough for you. All right, so it's International Chess Day. It's Monday. We got to hit bench press, right? So that's fine. Traditional workout, go ahead and throw that in there. That's your primary workout, right? Then we're going to do two supplemental supporting exercises as well. This one's going to be a little different than the last one because we really want to get as much out of the bench press as we can. We're going to throw an active rest exercise in there with a fatigue finisher at the end. And I'll show you what that looks like. So the structure is going to be bench press for however many reps you can do. And you can go close to failure because we have an active rest in between. Then I'm personally going to go into dragon flags. You can do jack knives, you can do whatever ab exercise you can get on the ground, do Russian twists or anything like that. Active rest is a stacking exercise so that way you're still moving, still burning calories, you're still expending energy. And the last finisher exercise is going to be elevated push-ups. And what that's going to look like is bench press first, ab exercise second, and then chest finisher at the end. That way you have a little bit of time in between your bench press to your last chest finisher to squeeze the rest of that orange out. So I'll show you what that looks like. So in a structured program, I would do like 12 reps or something like that, but I'll do four reps just as an example. So here, one, two, three, four, and then I'll go into my ab exercise because I'm nice and fatigued in my chest now. For me, that's going to be dragon flags. One, two, three, four. And so in between that bench, I've rested a little bit on my chest. So it is now, it's not back up to completely rested, which means I can still do a body weight exercise finisher, which is how I'm going to do next or what I'm going to do next, which is those incline or elevated feet push-ups. So I'm going to get down on the ground, put my feet up on the bench, and then push. And the reason we structure it like that is because you're teaching your body to do more with what it has left. And that active rest in between the bench press to the ab exercise, and when you're doing the ab exercise, your chest is now about uh, resting while you're doing this other exercise so you're still being challenged in an active rest but your chest is still resting so then it, obviously we can't hop back and do another set of bench press right away I mean potentially you could if you want to do like a regular superset but I like doing the functional aspect as well which is throwing those body weight fatigue push-ups involved that way you squeeze the orange and get the most potential out of your workouts as possible and that is how I would structure uh, those circuits. And those are just two examples of what you can do. Uh, the list is endless and the possibilities are endless when it comes to creating these workouts. So have some fun with it, create these little mini challenges to do and uh, stack them on top of each other. So I'd say like three of these mini circuits, get a nice warm up and a nice cool down in there as well. And that should be a really solid structure for a workout for you. Uh, now, next time you go to the gym, you know what you're doing. Hopefully y'all, got something out of this video please like and subscribe if you enjoy it and uh, i'll see you in the next one